with religion. Wait, he is engaged this? in no. Takia. Okay. He is engaged in no, Takia. That's not the truth. Yeah, it is. I'm he you is. The truth as he is dissimulating his lie. Just so we know, it is the ability to t <laughs> to lie, basically. To that's lie what he means. to advance <laughs> the faith of Islam by radicals, and you can't deny it. And you may, for all I know, not be a mother moderate you pretend to be, because you may be engaging in takia and be engaging in lying for the purpose of furthering your religion. Why should I believe you? Lies. Just to lie, again, you know, and to say that which is not in agreement with the truth, to be double-faced, and so on and so forth. Because in their religion, they're allowed to lie while swearing by Allah. This is how bad it is. And so the ulama said they are the biggest liars the ummah has ever known. The biggest liar the ummah has ever known are these individuals because they lie so much and their religion is based on lies. How are you going to deal with them? Long-lasting and pressing questions have remained unclear around the concept of taqiyya, causing many inflammatory statements and feelings. Taqiyya, known as dissimulation, has been taken out of context and misinterpreted ever since its existence. We examine this concept and ask some of the most common questions that conventionally arise. Taqiyya is an act of wisdom when it is required to save the life or dignity or property of the believer or believers by not coming openly with everything that we believe in. And taqiyya, in fact, comes with the logic that we, as human beings, should always try to avoid danger and avoid harm which is not necessary to be faced by us. Sometimes there is no taqiyya. Imam Hussein salam in Karbala did not have the taqiyya. But not all the situations of their life like Karbala. Taqiyya is the wisdom of saying the suitable or behaving the suitable behavior in the specific situation by not coming out openly with everything that we believe in for the interest of the believer or the community. Qiyya comes from the Arabic derivatives such as tuqa, yattaqi, or um, taqa, which essentially means to defend, to protect, to safeguard, to fear. In uh, Islamic teachings, taqiyya is to save one's life, honor, or property when one is uh, fearing that they may be lost. This involves concealing one's belief and faith and thereby preserving uh, the sanctity of human life. The history of taqiyya goes back to uh, religions before Islam and we can get many stories from Quran uh, as the story of Ashab uh, al-Kahf, the KFP men, and uh, Rasul, uh, Prophet Ibrahim, uh, Prophet uh, Yusuf السلام, We can go uh, in summary through these stories. Um, uh, but the evidence of Taqiyya is uh, uh, the intellectual evidence as each being every kind of even the plants sometimes when they fear that there is a danger uh, it, they may go around in a way to protect themselves either from sun or from any danger or in danger uh, cause which might uh, threaten them so this is applicable to uh, human being as well 
and uh, our intellect always always indicates or instruct us to protect ourselves we go through the stories in the in the Quran about the religions before Islam we can go back to the story of Prophet Ibrahim السلام, where he hide his belief uh, in order to protect and to keep himself and not to be killed by his family and this is not because he love life and he would like to become richer or or get some kind of uh, position in society but because he was a prophet of God and he had a deeper and more complicated sophisticated role a better job to lead the ummah after and that's what happened same thing with the story of Ashab al-Kahf where they hide and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jal helped them and they slept for uh, around 300 years and so on and so forth and uh, if we go through the ayat we notice that they were using what we call now taqiyya Prophet Yusuf السلام, when he was instructed by his father Prophet Yaqub not to tell the story to the, the dream to his brothers that was kind of taqiyya when he was uh, hiding his belief uh, uh, before uh, his victory that was uh, another example of taqiyya even some ulama and some mufassirin they say even when there was uh, they call for the, uh, the, 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 the people when they came in order to get his brother and he tell a different story or he instructs someone to tell a different story that was all kind of taqiyya so taqiyya is uh, I mean we have so many uh, cases and uh, stories before Islam from other religions from other uh, uh, even uh, groups communities which indicates that they were using taqiyya until nowadays I think nowadays what's called politics or uh, kind of uh, let's call it diplomacy because politics probably can indicate some kind of uh, not straightforward uh, steps but let's say diplomacy diplomacy uh, includes uh, at some stage uh, some kind of taqiyya all of God's creation as far as the plants and the animals as well as humans practice this concealment for survival you look at certain plants that indeed are ones that conceal themselves amongst other plants you find animals such uh, as uh, and insects and others and reptiles such as uh, lizards who find for instance places that they can camouflage themselves in order to ensure their protection hence it is something that is practiced and seen and rationally accepted by all it is not specific to the religion of Islam it is applicable to all human beings and it is dictated by common sense if we today were to ask somebody a question that if someone was to come and wanted to kill a Muslim that we may know about and would ask us where this person is where can I find them would we say to them where that person is or not and of course the reply would be that we would not we do not wish that person to be killed how about if that person to be killed was ourselves if we are in a dangerous position surely rationality dictates that we have to preserve our own lives by indeed practicing taqiyya and concealing our faith so that indeed life is preserved remembering that this idea is also present in the Old Testament and the New Testament and at the same time there are prophets of God who practiced this type of concealment this taqiyya known as dissimulation so dissimulation for instance was practiced by Prophet Ibrahim السلام, when they came to him and said that you need to come with us and go to the outside celebration but he remained and he said to them for instance in me saqim I am ill or Yusuf السلام, with his father when his father said do not tell your brothers about the dream that you saw or for instance the mother of Moses peace be upon them when it came to identifying the son that was placed of hers Musa in the river Nile and Pharaoh had taken him of course they would not identify themselves as the family of Moses but they would feed him hence it is rationally accepted when Allah created the human beings and gave them logic 
and intellect and reason. The reason says that you should not say or behave in a way which can bring damage to you or to your community. So it is as old as the origin of human life. That's why you find that Ibrahim, the great prophet, peace be upon our prophet and his holy progeny, and Ibrahim and his progeny, did taqiyya when he was being asked by his enemies what he said. He said, Inni saqim. And also, he did taqiyya again when he was being asked who destroyed our idols. He said, ask the big idol. So, taqiyya is the logic which is with every human being and taqiyya is not only a religious practice merely we have got practices which are merely religious of course we believe that every religious practice is based on logic but taqiyya is a logical principle. That's why you find people from different faiths, even people who have no religion. As a human being, they don't say everything they know everywhere and in every situation. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his holy progeny, in Mecca, he did practice taqiyya and Ahlul Bayt السلام, practiced taqiyya and they ordered the believers to practice taqiyya whenever taqiyya is required. The Holy Quran addresses taqiyya in various verses and in some cases concealment is praised. Yet although that is the case, many people nevertheless deny the permissibility of the usage of taqiyya today. We extract some verses that indicate some of the stories whereby taqiyya was practiced and discuss their importance in reference to some authentic hadiths. The taqiyya of Mu'min al-Fir'aun, the believer who was in the tribe of Fir'aun, and that was even before the wife of Fir'aun and before the time of Prophet Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, and this is uh, in Surah Ghafir. وَقَالَ رَجُلٌ مُؤْمِنٌ مِّنْ آلِ فِرْعَوْنَ يَكْتُمْ إِيمَانَهُ أَتَقْتُلُونَ يَكْتُمْ إِيمَانَهُ So he's hiding his belief. أَتَقْتُلُونَ رَجُلًا أَنْ يَقُولَ رَبِّيَ اللَّهُ وَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَإِيَّكُ كَاذِبًا فَعَلَيْهِ كِذْبُهُ وَإِيَّكُ صَادِقًا يُصِبْكُمْ بَعْضُ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ هُوَ مُصْرِفٌ كَذَّابٌ آية 28 from سورة آل عمران بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين ومن يفعل ذلك فليس من الله في شيء إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقاتا ويحذركم الله نفسه وإلى الله المصير A number of Quranic verses are cited by Muslim theologians and um, uh, scholars when it comes to supporting the belief in taqiyya, the simulation. One is found in chapter 3, verses 28 to 29, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لا يتخذ المؤمنون الكافرين أولياء من دون المؤمنين That the believers should never take the non-believers as guardians or those with authority over the believers. Because sometimes what happens is people go to non-believers for advice or to, lit to take them as people who they should follow at the expense of believers. And then the Quran says, وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَلَيْسَ مِنَ اللَّهِ فِي شَيْءٍ Indeed, whoever does this, Allah has nothing to do with them. إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ تُقَاتْ Except, if this scenario happens, where taqiyya is being practiced. Notice how many times this particular derivative of taqiyya is used. تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ تُقَاتْ Except if you're going through dissimulation. And at the same time, you'll find in the story of Ammar ibn Yasir in chapter 16, 
verse 106, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, Man kafara billahi min ba'di imanih. Whomsoever disbelieves in God after his belief, illa man ukriha wa qalbuhu mutma'innum bil iman. Except of the one who is forced somehow, whilst his heart is full of belief. And indeed, the uh, permission is given here for this practice to take place. Of course, there are other verses in the Holy Quran that come to support this notion of taqiyah. Means the believer should not be with the non believers, but only if he was being forced. Yet his heart is peaceful with the faith. So these are clear verses in the Quran about taqiyya, beside the verses about the practice of taqiyya by the prophets like Ibrahim alayhi salam. There is a strong plethora of ahadith that are found in support of the belief in taqiyya and dissimulation. For instance, the Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, states, la deena liman la taqiyya talah. Whomsoever does not practice taqiyya or does not believe in taqiyya, indeed there is no religion for them. Imam al-Baqir is narrated to have stated, التَّقِيَّةُ مِنْ دِينِ وَدِينُ آبَائِي That when it comes to taqiyya, it constitutes part of my religion and the religion of my forefathers. وَلَا إِمَانَ لِمَنْ لَا تَقِيَّةَ له. That whomsoever does not believe in taqiyya has undermined belief in iman. Likewise, Imam Sadiq السلام, would say, تِسْعَةُ أَعْشَارُ الدِّينِ فِي التَّقِيَّةِ Nine-tenth of religion is found in taqiyya. The emphasis is profound and is quite strong that we see that taqiyya is highlighted here. And the question is why? Why is there so much um, encouragement on this particular practice? And the reason is the fact that we have the religion of Islam today is because of taqiyya. It's because during the time of the Holy Prophet, for instance, the 13 years that they were in Mecca, Rasulullah, with the Muslims, they practiced taqiyya. Is the fact that during the time of Imam Sadiq and the Imams after him, taqiyya was practiced widely to preserve the teachings of the Ahl al-Bayt, the pure, pristine teachings of the religion of Islam. Hence, taqiyya is essential. It's a Quranic concept which is validated and indeed one that should be practiced if an individual fears for their life and therefore they would conceal their faith. The Holy Prophet, his da'wah was in secret, a da'wah kana sariyah, in secret for three years. And uh, this is the best example, awwal mazdaq, the best example of the application of taqiyah. And most of the anbiya, not the Holy Prophet, all anbiya, they start, they begin their uh, provocation, their da'wah, their tabliq, their mission in secret. If we go through other stories, even Nuh, as I mentioned, Ibrahim, Jesus, Isa, all of them. And all of that are uh, examples of the usage of at taqiyya That our worst enemies are not those who are trying to kill us, but those who claim to be our followers, yet don't practice taqiyya because they give people evidence or reason to come and kill us and kill our followers. There are many misconceptions which have circulated the notion of taqiyya due to differences in opinion. This has created an ongoing disagreement and therefore in the following segment we dissect some of the major misconceptions. There are many misconceptions about taqiyya. In fact, the enemies of Ahlul Bayt claim that taqiyya is a sort of lying which is completely wrong. It is not lying. It is the wisdom. The Prophet himself was not lying when he was in Taqiyya during his stay in Mecca. The Prophet Ibrahim was not lying when he used to do Taqiyya. All our infallible Imams were not lying when they used to practice Taqiyya. Taqiyya is not lying. Taqiyya is 
the practice of wisdom. This is one. We tell them that if Taqiyya was lying, then why Allah is telling us in Quran, إلا أن تتقوا منهم تقات إلا من أكره وقلبهم وطمئنهم بالإيمان The verses in Quran about Taqiyya. So, this is one of the misconceptions from the enemies of Ahlul Bayt. Some people nowadays claim that time of Taqiyya is gone. Now there is no place for Taqiyya in our life. That is also another wrong, very dangerous wrong. Because Taqiyya will remain till the day of judgment. Taqiyya will remain till the day of judgment. So, taqiyya is must. No one can claim that taqiyya's time is over. Some people wrongly think that taqiyya means they leave their obligatories, like he does not pray salah at all because of what he thinks taqiyya. No. You pray your salah. Don't leave your salah. If you are among people that you cannot perform your salah properly as it should be performed, perform salah like them. Hold your hands. Do it like them. You are performing salah under taqiyya situation, but don't leave your salah. One of the common misconceptions is that taqiyya constitutes a form of lying, uttering of falsehood and not speaking the truth. And the way we respond to this is by stating that indeed when Islam emphasizes the sanctity of the life of the Muslim, we believe, and the Quran affirms this, that in certain instances one is able to practice this because there is a big, bigger, more important objective. Just like how the Quran, for instance, states that eating of swine and drinking of alcohol is forbidden. Yet today, Muslims are in agreement that if an individual was in the desert by themselves, all alone, hungry or thirsty, then if there is no food other than, for instance, pork, or there is no drink other than that alcohol, then they are allowed to drink a small amount to safeguard their lives. In other words, they must not be the source of destruction of their lives because of non-existence of whatever that is halal. Hence, at times of desperation, one needs to look at what safeguards and saves our lives. And this is also the case when we fear for our lives and the lives of others where dissimulation is then permitted and can be practiced. Another misconception that exists is that taqiyya tantamounts to hypocrisy, nifaq. There are, of course, four categories when it comes to the relationship between speech and action of a human being. An individual who has a belief in their hearts and also acts in accordance to this belief is a believer. An individual who is a disbeliever in their hearts, but when they pretend that they're believers, those are hypocrites. An individual who does not believe in their hearts and at the same time actions um, in accordance with that, in other words, they do not practice, nor do they believe, they're a disbeliever. But the fourth category is no, if a person, a human being, a, a male or female who believes, but for certain reasons does not speak that, and sometimes speaks the opposite for a goal in accordance with certain conditions and restrictions, that is what taqiyya is. So taqiyya is distinguished from hypocrisy. Taqiyya is the presence of belief in the heart. Taqiyya does not necessarily mean that an individual continuously practices hypocrisy. By far, this is not the idea. The idea is simply to ensure that there is a well-being and the preservation of life, which is considered important. Uh, lying is telling a false story for no reason. Taqiyya is hiding the good thing inside ourselves, 
and showing something different for a, a noble reason in order to protect ourselves. And this is, as I, uh, I may need to explain that part of it came from the, uh, the la dharar and the la haraj and la whatever, where there is al qawaid fiqhiya used in Islam. Always when there is a dharar, when there is harm on anyone, he is allowed to do whatever to protect himself. This is also kind of uh, taqiyya, also uh, kind of uh, protecting ourselves from harm. Is well known among the followers of Ahlul Bayt, but it is it exists in all the Islamic schools of thought. They don't say it, and they always finger on at, at us that we are the people who practice taqiyya, but they also, and not only the other Islamic schools of thought, every follower of any religion, everyone practices taqiyya, but they don't give the, the name of taqiyya. It is exactly, the practice is the same. Nowadays, you find Wahhabis who are on the same line of Al-Qaeda. But when they speak in public, in the West, they speak against Al-Qaeda. In their own private meetings, they are with Al-Qaeda. Why they speak in public against Al-Qaeda and try to distance themselves from Al-Qaeda? Taqiyya. They want to show something to save themselves. So, the taqiyya is being practiced by every human being. But we practice taqiyya not only because it is a logic, but also it is ibadah. For us, we do it for the sake of Allah, because we have been ordered to practice taqiyya, and we obey the order in practicing taqiyya. The belief in dissimulation or taqiyya is not only one that is uh, restricted to the madhab of Ahl al-Bayt, the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, but rather a number of scholars from the uh, Ahl al-Sunnah wal Jama'ah have come forward to affirm the need to practice taqiyya when it is required. For instance, we have Alama Qurtubi in his book Al-Jami' li Ahkam al-Qur'an. In volume 10, he has mentioned that taqiyya is indeed something which is permissible. Likewise, Ibn Kathir, who is a Shafi'i scholar, in his tafsir in volume 2, page 609, at the same time has affirmed the legitimacy of, ta of taqiyya. Fakhruddin al-Razi in his tafsir al-Kabir, volume 20, page 121. Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani in his famous book Fath al-Bari, volume 1, page 264. And the list continues simply because of the rational acceptance of the idea of concealing one's faith at times of danger and at times of difficulty. You'll find that this practice is not reserved only for the madhab of Ahl al-Bayt, but within the religion of Islam and even outside it is accepted and as well practiced. There are so many sages, especially nowadays, for what's happening to the followers of Ahl al-Bayt. Uh, until recently, I'm sure we all have heard what has happened to uh, them in different parts of the world. So when anyone fear or had the feeling that these things might happen to him, he is, uh, I think he should use uh, taqiyya. When we feel that uh, he's surrounded with danger, when he's surrounded with the enemies of Islam, he's surrounded with some kind of narrow-minded people, I think taqiyya should be used. Nowadays, like any time when there are enemies of the true Islam, you cannot come out with your whole faith in front of the enemies. That will cause disasters. That will put our small communities in a big danger. They can be slaughtered. So, the Muslims who are living in non-Muslim communities or countries, in small minorities, in villages, in small places, in pockets. They must perform taqiyya to save themselves. 
and the followers of Ahlul Bayt, wherever they live, they always should practice taqiyya to save either themselves or others. I mean, if we are living in a safe society, that does not mean that all the followers of Ahlul Bayt are living on the same situation. We should think about those who are living in a different situation and they are under the sword of the enemies. Taqiyya is something that should be practiced at any opportunity or at any time where it needs to be. So if today we are confronted in a situation whereby we fear for our lives and the lives of others and we need to conceal our faiths, then we do so. Likewise, there are degrees of, of taqiyya and dissimulation. There is one which is known as the reconciliatory taqiyya, which means that we do not necessarily must mention all of our beliefs publicly if we understand that some of these that we uh, acknowledge may in a shape or form alienate and create friction and dissension, especially amongst the Muslim ummah and the other Muslim communities. And one example that has been cited by our scholars, for instance, is the fact that there are some Muslim leaders that we, when we study history objectively, might not look at favorably. But there is, of course, no need for us to come out and to, in a very insulting way, pray, pray, uh, put them down simply because of the conclusion that we have reached. Therefore, taqiyya has a time, it has a place, but can be practiced whenever it needs to be in order to fulfill the over overall objective. Taqiyya, actually, uh, we've got five types of taqiyya according to what's called al-ahkam al-khamsa. Al-hur al-wujub versus al-hurma, al-istihba versus al-karaha, and then al-ibaha. The haram taqiyya is al taqiyya fi al If someone is going to be killed, we are not allowed to use taqiyya uh, and let him die. Like we are not allowed to tell different story and then he got killed because of taqiyya. This is the haram taqiyya. Otherwise, taqiyya is allowed. And as I said, sometimes it's compulsory, wajib. Others, it's mustahab, highly recommended. If an individual noticed widespread oppression, if a human being recognized that through taqiyya, uh, the lives of other human beings would be at stake. If an individual recognized that without making their voices heard, indeed the religion of Islam and its spread and preservation would be at danger, then certainly dissimulation should not be practiced. Look at the example of Imam al Hussein, sallallahu alayhi that he noticed the corrupt nature and the tyrannical rule of Yazid ibn Muawiyah, and he stood to change and to instigate this process of revolt against this ruthless uh, caliph. Likewise, Sayyida Fatima alayha, also recognized the need to speak out and to demand for her right when it comes to Fadak and everything else. When we come to, for instance, uh, Sheikh al mudaffar in his famous book, Aqaid al Imamiya. He says that taqiyya is not permissible in a number of circumstances and situations. Number one, if it is results in the killing of another sacred, innocent soul. So for instance, we have a judge. A judge who practices taqiyya in order to save his life, but this action will result in somebody else losing theirs who are innocent. This is not permissible. Number two, fasadan fiddeen if it is causes corruption in terms of practice of faith. Number three, ضَرَرًا بَالِغًا عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ بِإِذْلَالِهِمْ If it is a extensive hardship or harm that will be inflicted upon the Muslims. And number four, إِفْشَاءُ الظُّلْمِ أَوْ الْجُورِ If it is involving by taqiyya, we result in the spreading of corruption and oppression then taqiyya must not be practiced. You see, taqiyya has got many benefits. There is a book written by one of our respected scholars. In that book, he has enlisted 18 different dimensions 
of the great benefits of taqiyya. No doubt, taqiyya also helps in making the Muslim ummah more harmonized. That does not mean that we are compromising our faith. Our faith remains, but we don't need to come out with the whole faith in front of anyone. Allah, the glorious in Quran, tells us not to come out with our Islamic faith in front of non-believers who will respond attacking our faith and abusing Allah. Allah says in Quran, وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ When you say the whole truth in front of those who worship someone else, not Allah, they will get angry and they will attack Islam and they will abuse Allah. Don't do that. We are not compromising our faith, but we are not saying anything which goes against wisdom. Our faith remains, and we should always try to strengthen our faith. Right is right, wrong is wrong, but taqiyya does not change anything in our faith. It is a matter of practicing the wisdom up to what extent you are allowed to disclose if there is a possible danger. The story of Ammar, Ammar stays alive and Ammar did a lot to Islam and to the Holy Prophet, to the message of the Prophet and to Amir al muni So probably the idea behind Taqi is that when we protect ourselves, we protect ourselves and keep ourselves for a reason, for a day where we may do better and give more rather than just finish our life. Because life is the best gift Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to a human being. And we need to maintain it and keep it. And that's why Allah asks us to follow taqiyya. Not because uh, it's a matter of conspiracy or trying to show people something. But because this life has got specific meaning, we have a specific role in this society. We need to do the best to the ummah. So if we think that we can do something better later on, there is no problem. We use taqiyya and I'm sure uh, uh, we will. the guy who is using taqiyya will be able to give more to the ummah and to the society he lives in. Islam is a religion of tolerance and Islam emphasizes the need for us to reflect and to use the power of the intellect. Amir al-Mu'mineen salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi when he gave his famous advice and his will to his son Imam al-Hasan al-Mujtaba salamullahi alayhi he stated waqula bilhaq qula bilhaq is not translated as say the truth because the letter ba is used by Imam. Ba is ba ut-tab'eeth, which means that when you have the truth, make sure that what you state is indeed selective in accordance to the group on the community you are addressing. If you know information and you have some knowledge, you do not come out and speak of it at any place, at an, any group. In other words, Imam alayhi salam says, be careful and be an intelligent human being when you speak to others. Because the goal is bigger, the objective is grand. Hence, sometimes taqiyya can be used to invite people toward the madhab of Ahl al-Bayt. And indeed, it can be used for the sake of unity. But we are certainly not compromising our beliefs. We are tolerating and respecting others by ensuring that we do not uh, disrespect and insult personalities that those individuals themselves have grown to respect, honor, and revere. The well-known companion of the Prophet and the faithful companion of the Prophet, he was being forced to show the non-believers in Mecca something.
or to say something. And he did say that. But he remained mu'min. So if you don't show your full faith to the enemies, you are not, dis not disbeliever at all. You are a believer because Allah knows what is in your heart. And Allah knows that you did what you did just out of taqiyya. You are trying to save yourself or others. So you become good believer, in fact. You become very high-ranked believer when you practice taqiyya in the proper way. There is no doubt that taqiyya must be practiced in accordance with the conditions and the circumstances that are clearly stipulated. In other words, the fear of one's life, property or honor. And at the same time, there is this false accusation and misconception that is targeted towards the followers of Ahl al-Bayt, despite other schools of thought agreeing and coming with the conclusion that taqiyya is permissible and the Qur'an has validated it, yet the school of Ahl al-Bayt and the followers are often ridiculed and mocked, and at the same time accused that when they speak, they are always practicing taqiyya. The answer to this is simple. Our books are present. Our texts are there. Our teachings are available for people to come and see. If when we speak to others, we are accused of practicing taqiyya, despite denying this, then one would be able to reach the teachings of the madhab of Ahl al-Bayt through looking at our texts, through looking at the books, through looking at the wealth of knowledge that has been passed on from the Ahl al-Bayt towards the ulama and has reached us today. Yet at the same time, we categorically deny and we reject this notion and this suggestion by certain individuals that we that when it comes to speaking to a Shia or the madhab or followers of Madhab al-Bayt, they are continuously practicing taqiyya. Taqiyya is only performed or practiced at the time of fear. And in most cases, when we find we sit ourselves in dialogue, certainly in places and in countries where peaceful coexistence is encouraged and people are able to safeguard their security and they will not be persecuted, killed or imprisoned just because of their belief, just because of their madhab, then you'll find that there is no need for the practice of taqiyya and dissimulation. We tell them that we are not lying, we are following the way of all the prophets. People want to accuse us, even the prophet was being accused. The Prophet was being called Kadhabun Ashr by the enemies of the Prophet. So the enemies of the followers of Adul Bayt, let them say whatever they want to say. Allah knows who is the truthful and who is the liar. We are the truthful community. We are the followers of the truth. We are followers of Ahlul Bayt, really not claiming because many Muslims claim that they are following Ahlul Bayt, but we are the only community who are following Ahlul Bayt from A to Z in our faith, in our practice, in everything we follow Ahlul Bayt and Ahlul Bayt did not bring anything from themselves. They brought it only and only from the Prophet. So we are the only community who are following the Prophet in the real meaning. We are not lying. We are abiding the orders of Allah in Quran who said, إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقُوا مِنْهُمْ تُقَاتِ And we are abiding the order of the Prophet in the hadith that he who has no practice of taqiyya has no religion. So let those who want to accuse us do whatever they want to do. The fact remains that we are following the Islamic wisdom and part and parcel of the Islamic wisdom is taqiyya, which makes us always away from danger. Look at Islam without taqiyya. Just imagine it. If the Prophet did not practice taqiyya in Mecca, Islam would have been finished. If the infallible imams 
from Imam Ali alayhi salam till today, Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam. If they did not practice taqiyya, real Islam would have been finished. Taqiyya is the protection, the shell. And even in the hadith, we have got a taqiyya to Jannatul Mu'min, means that taqiyya is a shell of the believer. So it is not lying, but it is practicing the wisdom for the noble cause of saving the believers. They say, yet you are lying. We say, no. In Islam, Allah gives us permission when someone is dying and there's no food but only non-halal food. It becomes compulsory on him to eat from that non-halal food to save his life. That non-halal food, which is not allowed to be consumed in the usual situation, it becomes compulsory to save life to eat, not to die. Taqiyya is to save lives and to save dignity and to save community from the dangers. When there is no benefit from facing the danger, we must practice taqiyya and all the followers of Ahlul Bayt must practice it. Abiding Allah and the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt and by practicing taqiyya, the da'wa means the invitation of non believers to Islam and those who don't know Ahlul Bayt, inviting them to real Islam will continue. Without taqiyya, the da'wa will stop because everyone will become, will turn enemy to us. And by taqiyya, we can convey the message. We can invite people to the real Islam with a tactful way with wisdom and we don't need to face people in a dose of truth which is more than their ability to consume or to accept because that big dose will react in a very bad way against us. So in all dimensions, taqiyya is the absolute wisdom and the order from Allah and the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt to all the believers. Often life situations dictate that a person conceals some of their beliefs in order to avoid offending others and cause damage between communities. The benefits of taqiyya are undermined and misunderstood, hence the frequent accusations. Wisdom begs that we understand when it is the right time to employ taqiyya and ensure that we promote brotherhood rather than ignite disunity. Observing the methods of logical dialogue and tolerance safeguards our humanity and religion. Observing the methods of logical dialogue and tolerance safeguards our humanity and religion. Thus we come to the conclusion that taqiyya is deemed to have an utmost significance in the religion of Islam and due to its importance it comes with a responsibility.